Hi, welcome to this uh, channel. In this session, I want to continue to speak about this whole very vital subject of rest. Rest, not in the sense of inactivity, but rest in the sense of absolute peace, security, and free from stress and fear. Um, as I've considered this whole subject in this past week, I realized that there is so much more to it. And it is such a deep and vast subject that it actually stretches right across the whole of the Bible and culminating in the book of Hebrews, where we are given a lot more detail on this whole subject of rest. So I'm going to now dive in and let's explore this together and allow the Lord to not only open our hearts to the understanding of it, but to give us wonderful peace and rest. We're living in a world of turmoil and of fear and anxiety. Uh, a pandemic has gripped the whole world, and it is a very strange situation that we're living in. So that's just adding to the normal stresses of life. So let us look to the Lord to find this uh, wonderful rest and security in Him as we are rooted and grounded in the love of Jesus. Okay, so here we are. This is Rooted and Grounded in Love, Part 5. And we want to look at this very vital subject, as I said, the significance of rest in the Bible, which is so very important. Let us recall that Genesis chapter 1 through 11, we find the fall of man where Adam and Eve are put out of the garden and where eventually the Tower of Babel is built and God goes down and divides the nations. So there's the fall of mankind and humanity in general, and the, and the whole downward slide of the wickedness of mankind. And then God responds to this in chapter 12 by singling out a random man by the name of Abram and making a covenant with him to say that through him, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And so from chapter 12 through to chapter 50 of Genesis, we trace the family of Abraham and the development of that family through Isaac and Jacob and then the 12 sons of Jacob and how that they eventually land up in Egypt and under the leadership of one of the sons of Jacob by the name of Joseph, um, they are blessed and put into the land of Goshen in Egypt where they prosper and grow and they're there for about 400 years but eventually they become slaves because the Pharaoh there was afraid of them because they were growing into such a mighty nation and they seemed to be to him a threat. Um, <clears throat> and so that they, he hardened his heart towards Israel, but God sent a deliverer in the form of Moses and led them out into the wilderness where God at Mount Sinai began to set the terms of his agreement with this nation. They were going to be his special nation. And through this nation, he was going to allow the rest of the world to see uh, who God is and what God is like. And so they were going to be a nation of priests. In other words, they would represent God to the other nations. It is in the wilderness that God introduces this whole question of a Sabbath rest. We mentioned this in the previous video, that every seventh day was to be a Sabbath and a rest. Every seventh year was to be a Sabbath and a rest. Uh, every 50th year was to be a jubilee. And then during the year, there were various feasts that were particular Sabbaths and rests. And this all relates back to Genesis chapter 1, where God rested on the seventh day. Now, <clears throat> what we need to uh, appreciate is that when we go to the book of Hebrews, this whole question of rest that was so emphasized in the Old Testament is now interpreted by the writer of Hebrews and it, it comes into its own and we begin to understand the fuller implications of what God was saying about this time of rest. So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Long ago, many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. So he's telling us that Jesus is both the message and the messenger. 
And while the prophets were very important and all that they said was extremely important, it was all leading up to this glorious moment when God would reveal his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the universe. So he is now telling us the credentials of Jesus, this mighty one that we are to listen to. He's speaking to us by his son. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. What a mighty savior. So we need to give the more earnest heed to what is being said because God is now speaking to us and this is his final word to us in his son, Jesus Christ. So this is an extremely important thing and we need to now really listen and open our hearts to what God is saying through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. So why should we give the more earnest heed or more careful attention to what God is saying, as the book of Hebrews tells us? Now, Hebrews, I believe, is one of the most profound books in the Bible because the writer of Hebrews takes the whole of the Old Testament saga of the children of Israel in the wilderness and he interprets these things for us in a, in a wonderful way, putting a spiritual or giving a spiritual insight into exactly what was happening back in the Old Testament. So it's an interpretation of the Old Testament, but one by the Holy Spirit and written for us in the book of Hebrews. So what has this got to do with rest? Here's the important thing then. So the writer of Hebrews has some very hard-hitting things to say about the children of Israel in the wilderness. So as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. So he's talking about the time in the wilderness when, remember, the spies went into the land and 12 of them came back. Ten of them had a bad report. Two had a good report. And the children of Israel listened to the bad report of the ten. And that resulted in them going round and round in the wilderness for 40 years. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. So to enter the rest that God is speaking about, remember the Sabbaths were all just types and shadows or examples of the ultimate rest that he's offering to us. That a time in the new creation, in his presence, when we're at absolute peace, not in activity, serving the Lord, going about the things that he requires us to do, but in absolute security and rest, rooted and grounded in the love of God. So he is saying that this generation, because of their disobedience, he swore in his wrath, they would not enter his rest. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it, for we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. So we need to give the more earnest heed because God is speaking to us by his Son. And this is the vital message that will enable us to enter into God's rest, not by our own works, but by the grace and mercy of Jesus as we put our faith and trust in him. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For some way he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. So the writer of Hebrews is making a reference to somewhere. Now we know it's actually Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. 
So now the writer of Hebrews is tying all of this uh, revelation and consideration and exploration of this whole question of rest. He's tying it to that seventh day that God introduced right back there in the book of Genesis. And as we said in the last video, there's no evening and morning. There's no time uh, slot for the seventh day. It is, an, it is an eternal rest that God is inviting us into. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not enter in because of dis disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So it is today. Today is the time that we need to exercise ourselves in faith and belief and absolute trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. So it's not the Sabbaths or the Jubilees, but there, it is all pointing towards another day, the eternal rest that God is speaking about. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for those who enter God's rest also rest from their own work. So it's not by our own works that we enter this rest, but it's by absolutely relying upon the finished work of Jesus that we enter into this rest. Just as God did from his, God uh, rested from his works, so likewise we rest from our own works as we rely upon his work. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. So the writer of Hebrews has used that whole saga back in the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy to tell us not to follow that example. It's an example of what we should not do, but that we should by faith enter into this wonderful rest that God is offering to us. All of this then puts such great emphasis on the invitation that Jesus gave to us. And we've mentioned this before, Matthew chapter 11. He says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we need to come to the Lord Jesus and find rest from all the fear and anxiety and the burden of this life, and the burden of our own sin and guilt. Let him take that away from us. And then he's inviting us to learn from him. Learn from him in the difficulties of life. Learn to lean upon him and not have fear, but let perfect love cast out fear. Not be anxious for tomorrow, but learn from the Lord Jesus to put our absolute trust and confidence in him. The writer of Hebrews puts such emphasis in that first chapter of the credentials of the Lord Jesus. He is heir of all things, by whom also God made the universe, and he holds the whole universe together by the very word of his power. And he is far greater than the, the angels. He's obtained a better name than they. He's higher than the angels. He sits above them, and he is the one that is offering to us this rest for our souls, a rest from anxiety, a rest from fear, a rest from stress. But that's only a taste of what is to come because the ultimate rest is to be in his wonderful presence in the new earth, in the kingdom of God, uh, working and, and ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. This has quite clearly been the very goal of God, our creator, right from the beginning to bring us into this time of glorious rest in his presence in the new creation and that we might rule and reign with him and enjoy fellowship with God our Father and the Lord Jesus in this wonderful paradise that he has prepared for us. Amen.